So I think the first question I'd like to ask is, how did you get involved with Lotus, the, po the podcast of the Lotuses? Because I'm a huge fan. Yeah, well, for me, what happened was, um, and this will get into uh, uh, some, some stuff later on that we'll talk about as well, which is um, I wasn't... I was always kind of, I had ideas that I was a political person, but then later on found out that I was not and just had not been paying much attention to anything, especially when I was at university. You know, you kind of absorb the opinions of the people around you. I've been to a media university. I've been involved in heavy metal, um, in bands, and I've been involved in those sorts of local scenes for a long time. And one thing you find out is that people in those scenes are incredibly lefty. I mean, yeah. university, who would have guessed? So I... It was during lockdown. All of a sudden, I'm isolated from everybody else that I know. I'm still speaking to them online. Uh, but I went through a really, really bad period in 2020, at the beginning of lockdown. I went through some really bad stuff I don't want to talk about ex explicitly. Uh, but I, it got me in my head. I was like, okay, I need to shape up. And part of that shaping up was, you know, expanding my knowledge on things, reading a little bit of philosophy, going to Jordan Peterson, and then... As part of that, in early 2021, I suddenly discovered this podcast called The Podcast of the Lotus Eaters that was starting to talk about things that I was beginning to get interested in. And then throughout that year, I was listening to more and more. I started reading more books about things. Um, like I started reading The Gulag Archipelago. I, I still never finished it because that is a harrowing and depressing book to read. Got I've started it and I've never finished it either. Yeah, I got about 300 pages into the abridged version yeah. and was like, you know what? I get the picture. Yeah. It was really bad. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then I realized as well that back way, way, way back in the day, I used to hang out with a friend of mine all the time. I still see him every so often. And he would tell me about this thing that was going on called Gamergate. And uh, this Gamergate thing, when it first happened, was supposedly a really big deal. And it must have been because people still don't shut up about the bloody thing. And uh, he told me he was watching this guy, Sargon of Akkad. And at the time, you know, I thought, oh, it's just, uh, it's just a load of internet drama. And then when I was in university, <clears throat> before then I got into a guy, H Bomber guy, who is not a particularly nice person and is not somebody I would describe as a good faith actor and had slagged off this Sargon of Akkad character and even implied, well, outright stated at point, points that he should be deplatformed, that when he got his Patreon taken away from him, that that was the right thing to happen, you know, despite the fact that he was trying to support a family. And all of a sudden I'm watching Lotus Eaters and I'm like, hey, this is that Sargon guy. This is that Sargon guy I kept hearing about. I agree with a lot of things he's saying. He seems to make a lot of sense. And he see, and he's not like intellectualizing too much. He's just going like, okay, here's the thing that happened. Here's why it's bad, if it's bad, or here's why it's good, if it's good. Putting it in plain terms, you know, just what a Northern English, Englishman likes to hear. I just want to hear the meat and potatoes. I want simple. And um, at that point, I was working at a job based in Manchester. I was working remotely from home. And the place that I was living in, absolutely gorgeous, lovely little village town, um, very, very historic, but I was miserable. I was just completely miserable. My job was paying the bills for the most part, but I had no idea what was going to go on with, you know, being able to move up in the business. I had no enthusiasm in the subjects that I was covering. I was just covering radio. Like every single article I was writing was a variation on how is it that, um, like, like uh, what's the best microphone to use? Why you should sign up for our business? And I was just miserable. And then I noticed on the Lotus Eaters website, when I go on it one day, I'm like, they've got careers at the bottom of the page. Okay, click wow. on it. My. Yeah, click on it. And it goes, oh, they've got, they've got a presenter job going. All right. And in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, this is never going to happen. This is never going to happen. But I thought, you know, I might as well give it a try. I might as well just send an application. Even if it's a no, then that's me sorted for the rest of the month because at least I can tell myself that I tried. Yeah. And then I can work on other stuff in my in in my spare time, read some more books, maybe start my own YouTube channel that's gonna get like five views a month or something. Yeah. But you know, it'd be something. And then I got an email back saying, Hey, do you want an interview? I was like, All right, because I sent in as part of the application, you had to do a little test video for it. And I just talked about, oh, Australia is doing lots of bad stuff where they're locking people down. I don't agree with this at all. It's bad. They should stop. And 
that was enough to get me an interview. And I was really surprised. So I go drive all the way down to Swindon. I'm pretty sure I told the place that I was working at at the time that I was sick that day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't need to know any better. And did the interview. And I thought I messed it up. I thought I'd done so badly. I was nervous. I was probably visibly sweating. The most I could really... The, the best I was able to engage in proper discussion with the people was when Josh, who, you know, Josh, you've met Josh. I'm good friends with Josh now. But he, uh, I mentioned that I was really into music and he was immediately pe pepped up and was like, oh, you're really into music. What bands do you like? What do you do? And I got into a chat with him. But I, I leave and I'm thinking, oh God, I've really screwed that up. I can't believe it. And then the day after, after, you know, barely a wink that night, just thinking, oh God, I can't believe I met Sargon of a card. I've messed it up so badly. I get an email saying, hey, we liked your interview. Do you want to come in to do a test segment? Mm -hmm. Which I think is something they may have only done for me. I think everybody else either got the job or didn't get the job who got the interview. Because I know they would have been interviewing Thomas and John Wheatley around the same time. And I was like, okay, I come in. And once again, I think I've screwed it up completely. Um, after I prepared a segment, a test segment on Extinction Rebellion, because a lot of the mm -hmm. protests around in London were going on at the time. It was like last August, I think it was. Right. And uh, and then I get the email from from Vicky saying, "Yeah, when when can you start?" So that's how I got into it. And then I started working in the office last October, and then got started speaking to everybody and realised that despite the fact that in comparison to my normie friends, yeah, I may have been well informed and known what I was talking about. In comparison to everybody else in the office who's got say like. Carl's got years and years of experience talking about this stuff. He's what, like, I don't know how old Carl is, like 30 years older than me, maybe. Probably less than that. That's probably enough. I think it's a lot less than that. I'll, I'll <laughs> cut this bit out of the interview. All right, all right. You don't have to. Don't have to. Um, Carl's quite a bit older than me. He's got quite a few years' experience on me. Josh did a degree in psychology. I think he did a master's degree in psychology. Uh, now I'm working with Connor who has been doing this sort of stuff for years, despite being yeah. younger than me. And I thought, oh God, I really, really need to catch up. And to be fair, I think I've been doing a good job catching up on my knowledge since then. I hope it's noticeable. I think some people have started to notice that I've been putting a lot more effort in outside of work and in work to try and do some good, to do good work and make sure that I'm informed and up to date and even reading upon my history and philosophy. So mm -hmm. I've been really enjoying that. Working in the office is an experience a very unique experience and it's the sort of thing i'm really really grateful for because like i said the job that i was working before was just variations of the same old thing day in day out it's like the, every, every day it was like groundhog day mm. wake up start writing some rubbish article that five people's going to read and nobody's going to be interested in and i'm certainly not going to be interested in go kind of half ass it at the gym come back home go bed and that was just my day that was just yeah. my day every every single day and I never thought I would be able to get the opportunity to do what I'm doing now especially not to be able to speak to the size of an audience that I can I mean there are videos that I've done with Lotus Eaters now that have got over 300,000 views and that's ridiculous that's incomprehensible when you get a number like that um you can't really visualize in your head exactly what 300,000 people looks like i picture like wembley stadium yeah. and then i think you know it's wembley stadium out there and i'm just sat on a little table with callum or connor or josh or carl in the middle of it you know um having a laugh talking about stuff that i'm interested in talking about some of the nonsense that's gone in on in that day's news and it's almost absurd to me but i yeah. i can only think that I'm absurdly lucky to be in this position. When you think of some of the daily newspapers, most of them don't have a circulation of 300,000. No, they don't. <laughs> they absolutely don't. So Even those videos you've done are hitting more people than the Daily Mail, the Daily, you know, the, the, the Mirror, the Sun. You're hitting more than daily newspapers. I know. It's absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> And sometimes I wonder what exactly it is that I've done to deserve to be in this position that I'm in. And I just got to admit that I just must be lucky. <laughs> what I love about your office, I've been about four or five times now, I think, yeah. is, first of all, it's a lot bigger than anyone imagines. When I first turned up four months ago, I thought um, there may be three people in there. Carl, Callum, and maybe a producer or someone to work the cameras. You turn up, there's like... There's at least 12 people in there and not everyone's in there when I'm in there. 
So it's a huge production and that comes across with the quality of the production. But also it's the it's the way conversations suddenly break out across the desks. <laughs> and it's not conversations like, did you watch EastEnders last night? What do you think about someone missing that goal in a premiership last night? It's all about, oh, I read this book about this. And did you know that such a such person has wrote an article on that? And there's these intelligent conversations constantly flowing around, which makes me think sometimes how any is getting any work done. But then, <laughs> but, then but then you have to realize those conversations are the work. Yeah, I mean, once again, that that what you just described when I first came in last mm. October and sat down and all of a sudden people were talking about these really high minded ideas and referring to books and esoteric texts that mm. I'd never even heard of. That's what really intimidated me. But now I found that I can engage in those conversations and it's really fun. It's really fun and really interesting to be able to talk about something that I actually have an investment in mm. on a day to day basis with people that I consider very good and close friends of mine that we can have a laugh. We can have these really high minded discussions and then all of a sudden it'll break out into a little bit of laddish humor. Mm. I think that's one of the beautiful things about it is that we take the news seriously and we take ourselves seriously, but not too seriously. Yeah, And I think that would be, that would take away from the experience of when you're watching the podcast, for instance, if we were just incredibly stuffy and high minded the whole time, just furrowing our brows and constantly, mm. um, you know, no jokes allowed. I don't think it would work the way it does, because I know that a lot of people tune in for the sense of camaraderie that we yeah. bring to it and the different dynamics that come with each of the presenters. I consider myself to be a little bit of a chameleon with it because I can adapt my personality in the way that I behave a little bit depending on who it is that I that I'm sat opposite from you know I tailor my conversations with you in a particular way whenever you're on which I always find really interesting that's why I, I, I do treat it more like an interview when you're on Nick because I always think you've got really interesting uh, perspectives and things mm -hmm. to say um, I've got a particular rapport with Callum people have noticed that me and Connor really really get on and we've been doing yeah. loads of content together recently because he came in and started talking about comic books. And I think he was shocked to find that I've also read plenty of comic books over the years. So we've been doing a lot of that sort of content, but also um, trying to, we've been doing lots of pop culture content, but we don't want to drag it all down to just being, you know, base level pop culture analysis. Yeah. We've got a few interesting things planned in the future. I don't want to spoil for people, but mm. it will be very interesting. We're going to be digging deep into certain relatively controversial subjects. Cause that's the other thing that I like is the, freedom to be able to discuss things that are a little bit taboo a little bit controversial but all with the aim of trying to present the truth that's yeah. that's my that's my goal i consider myself cringe and cliche as it can sound can sound to say so and has kind of been um co-opted by a lot of centrists this sort of phrase but i consider myself a truth seeker some somebody who's interested in honesty and finding out what reality 